Okay, so the problem solving for the unit. The first item was that no water is coming from your air water syringe. The first thing that you'll want to do is check to make sure there's actually water in the bottle. And you'll learn how to do this in your unit prep. But you would turn off the switches. And then this one, the water bottle is way down here. And you would, um, after you've turned off your switches, you would unscrew that. Lefty Lucy. And then once it's all the way undone, you can check to make sure that the water is filled into the bottle correctly. And then, if that is correct, see, I'm going to put this back on. And then once you're done, make sure that you turn the switches back on again once you have it fully screwed on. So if that part is correct, then the next item you could look for is... Uh, like I mentioned that the water in the bottle has been turned on. You could find out if the pumps have been turned on by asking a friend to check their unit and see if their air water syringe is getting air or water from it. If not, you would need to tell the faculty that they should please turn the pumps on. The next thing you could check is if the plastic sleeve is actually impeding the water. So when you're putting this together, ideally what you would want to do is before you place the plastic sleeve, you're going to put the syringe tip in place. To do that, you just press on this yellow uh, item, little piece, and then you pull out. To get it in, you press down again, and you have to fully seat it all the way in. If it's not fully seated, it could either A, not work, or B, it'll leak all over the patient. Consequently, if I put this on first, and then I put the air water syringe over the top, the plastic can get caught and then it won't work as well or it will leak as well. So then after it's done, then you go through. And if you look closely, there will be a little slit in the edge of one of the, or the other side. And that's where the hole has already been made. So then you can just slide that right through. And then you're done. And then let's see, the last thing. Oh, we already talked about being fully seated. So, the next thing is that if your saliva ejector won't turn on, the first thing you would do is just ask a neighbor again to see if their saliva ejector will turn on, because then you know if it's your unit or if the pumps need to be turned on. One thing is that some of the units, the actual saliva ejector handle uh, can struggle a little bit, and so you want to pinch the handle together when you're turning it on and off. And this one doesn't work that way, but... Um, just the handle moves up or down to turn it on and off and you just pinch the sides as you're moving it and sometimes that will activate it to help turn it on. And the last thing is that this plastic sleeve again could get caught and trapped. So again you want to seat your saliva ejector all the way in. Okay, Don't, leave, don't just do it a little bit because it'll fall out for sure. Try to seat it as far down as it'll go first and then you'll slide it into the plastic sleeve. And again, you can find that hole. You'll have to make it slightly bigger and then just slide that over the rest and you're done. Okay, the next item was the chair will not move. So make sure that your chair isn't hooked on any other equipment. Occasionally, this will be um, out like this and if I try to lift my chair up or something else will be in the way, it'll run into those items. Not this particular thing, but... Some of the other things. So first things if your chair won't move is make sure everything's clear or out of the way from the chair. And then try unplugging the chair only and replugging it back in. And we already showed you that it's the clear one for the chair. You just unplug it and plug it back in. If the actual chair bracket, sometimes students struggle getting this to move. Make sure that the unit is on. So in the back, you always want to make sure that that says on. Uh, the pumps also have to be turned on in order for this to move. And then just to show you once how these move, you, there's always a release switch. And occasionally, it won't let you right now just go down. So you have to hit the release switch, go up, and then come down. And of course, the pumps aren't on, so it's not going down. <laughs> and so it's not moving. Let's see, then the chair makes a soft beeping noise. Now, oftentimes the problem is that this particular uh, item that moves the chair is snuck up underneath the chair too close. 
And if that happens, it'll go beep, 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 really light. And all you have to do to change it is just get this moved out further away from the chair. If this doesn't work, you can try plugging the chair back in and out. Then, let's see, there's no water in the Cavitron. Again, you would check to see that there's water in the bottle and that it's been turned on. Make sure the Cavitron has been turned on. And then last, you would do this reconnection. Again, trying to make sure that this got fully seated in here. So you would just take it out, depress that with your thumb, and then push as hard as you can, and then release. Let's see, what else do we have? Uh, the Profi angle doesn't work. The first thing that you would want to check if this isn't working for you is uh, find out if the pumps have been turned on by asking a peer or a friend if their unit's working. Make sure that the hand pieces are all lined up correctly so that it's not switched. If this blue one is over here instead of here, it won't work. Okay, and you'll get a weird hissing noise out of the other one instead. Uh, let's see, what else? Make sure that all of them, the rest of them, are fully down. If this is kind of just laying there and not fully in the seat, it won't work either. So it has to be all the way down uh, that deactivates this one so that this one can be activated. And last but not least, you can always try getting a different rubber cup. Occasionally we have some trouble with the disposable items of polishing and you can just try a new one. Okay, what else? The light won't turn on. You, there's not a lot you can do for this, but one thing you can try is unplugging the chair and plugging it back in. The other weird thing is occasionally just moving it around, kind of broad movements for a while, and then trying it. We've had some loose wiring occasionally in here, and sometimes moving it around will reactivate it. And last, if none of those things work, you have to tell your faculty person that you need a new light bulb in your light because that's probably what's wrong, or the fuse has burnt out. A hissing noise from the tray, typically that happens because these are not fully seated. And the other reason why is occasionally these actually just get pulled off like that. So always make sure that those are all the way up and seated as well if there's a hissing noise from your tray, your bracket tray. And then, let's see, the hissing noise from the water bottle it's most likely that it's not screwed on correctly. So make sure that when you're unscrewing it and screwing it that you try to stay as upright or vertical so that you keep aligned with the threads appropriately. If it was hissing, I would try unscrewing it and then carefully screwing it all the way back on until it's tight. You don't want to crank on it so that you wear out the threads, but the, it does need to be secure or you know, firm. And then make sure that the correct source is on for the water bottle. Again, uh, occasionally if this is on something different, uh, you might get uh, a hissing noise or more than likely it just won't work. Then Dentrix isn't working. Uh, this tends to happen more frequently than we would like. The first thing that you can try is once Dentrix is up, you just want to exit back out of Dentrix. So you go and close out of all the different windows of Dentrix. Then once you're out, you can try going back in and seeing if it will uh, work. And the passcode is just MSUM and then lowercase fall, F-A-L-L. -L. If that doesn't work, you can try turning the computer off all the way. So you would go to the shutdown function and then just hit shutdown and or you could even just go to restart. Uh, you can Alert the faculty and the other students around you if you're having trouble because most likely the problem will spread to the other units. So if you know you have to shut down, tell your IC or a faculty member so that everybody else can also shut down and get a reboot going. And the last thing I've seen happen before is occasionally there's no internet to the computer because the actual internet cord or the ethernet cord isn't secure to the wall. So go and check that ethernet cord as well. The last piece is if Blue Note's not working, as soon as you start the machine, you'll see Blue, Na Blue Note Communicator come up. If this is all blank, that means that the server has not been turned on. So you need to tell a faculty, please go turn on the Blue Note server. You can also make sure that uh, if the server hasn't been turned on, your peer or someone next to you, their Blue Note won't be working as well. If theirs is and yours isn't, then you would need to tell the faculty.
Thanks for listening.